Please join me in giving a well welcome to Senator Acosta, who has introduced Senate Bill 527. Thank you, Ayona. Thank you to the EPI and everybody who has been part of this. I apologize for the, the background noise and, and for my brevity um, because of the weather. I, I have some friends um, that are home. Uh, daycare has, has closed down early today. So uh, in, in the interest of time and, and, and an effort to not reiterate what has been said before, I want to speak very quickly on, on this bill, what we hope it might do, uh, what we can see from the Connecticut example. And, and also from this alternative path that, that Alan has suggested we might be able to go on. And, you know, I, I think what we envision this doing is giving the executive current and any future of the state an opportunity. I, I will be quiet. Soon. I'm working on it. Uh, an opportunity to present to us in their budget uh, an explanation of how they see equity. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a, a running joke in, in, in the state house that a governor will often propose a budget and then it becomes the General Assembly's job to, to dispose of it in some ways. Um, and I think it's important for us to, to think about what the negotiation process looks like between the General Assembly and the executive, um, also between the general public and what is being proposed in a budget. We know that budget documents can be very dense, very difficult to read. They don't always, they, they often include the amount of money that we're spending, but not the intent behind that money or how folks envision it being used in particular initiatives. And so we would like to see uh, a world in which the governor proposes a budget and with it uh, produces a document that allows us to see how they're envisioning that budget addressing issues of equity in our state, um, what types of initiatives that they're proposing. Uh, that way, when we have a conversation, not just with members of his administration and the General Assembly, but also with the public, we can talk through what some of the things are that you know, we, we must keep, that, that are must-haves, and which things you know, don't quite get us there. And so I'll share a very brief uh, experience that I had in, in my first year in the Senate. You know, I, I consider myself someone who tries to be a champion for issues around equity. And yet, you know, I was unaware of how long it had been that our state had not touched, looked at, or seriously considered raising the cash benefit for RI Works beneficiaries. And that blew my mind. As someone who has, who has benefited from various public assistance programs, you know, it spoke to me about how little we care about poor people in this state and how easy it is to keep them out of mind. And I, I, I now look back, considering the bill that we have in front of us and think, you know, what, would have, what, would it, what it might have meant if every year from the last time that we really worked on Rhode Island Awards, really in the late 90s, you had to have a governor go on record and say, you know, we're not gonna do, um, <laughs> okay. we're not gonna do anything about this um, and really push people to have a public conversation about that. And so, you know, I'm, I'm honored by the EPI working on this and asking me to, to try to be their champion for it in my chamber. And, uh, you know, I have a ton of gratitude for, for the coalition that stands behind this and, and for all my co-sponsors. So thank you all very much. And I'll uh, get back to, to wrangling my children. Thank you so much, 